Now let's discuss the functional anatomy of the cornea and the tear film. So we know that the surface of the eye is uh, bathed constantly by tears and this is made by the lacrimal gland. Some part of this is made by the conjunctival secretions and these tears drain away via the nasolacrimal system. Now this tear film is 3 micrometers thick and it, compo it is composed of 3 layers. Okay, So it is 3 micrometers thick and it is composed of 3 layers. So from inside to outside, okay, so from inside to outside, first of all, you have the mucin layer. This mucin layer is made by the conjunctival goblet cells. Then you have the aqueous layer and this is made by the lacrimal gland. And then you have the oil layer that is made by the meibomian gland. So the tear film is made of three layers. From inside to outside, you have first of all the mucin layer that is made by the conjunctival goblet cells. Then you have the aqueous layer that is made by the lacrimal gland and outside the outermost layer of this tear film is going to be made by the oil layer that is made by the meibomian glands. What's the function of this tear film? This tear film is going to give you a smooth air tear interface for distortion free reflection of light uh, at the corneum. It is going to transmit oxygen to the avascular cornea. It is going to remove debris and foreign particles from the ocular surface through the flow of tears. And also this tear film has got antibacterial properties. Through the action of lysozyme, lactoferrin, defensins and immunoglobulins, especially IgA, the tear film is going to get replenished with each blink. Then you have the cornea, okay. So the cornea is 0.5 millimeters thick. And it comprises of five layers, okay? You have the epithelium, the Bowman's membrane, the stroma, the decimus membrane, and the endothelium, okay? So from outside to inside, you have the epithelium. Now this epithelium is made of a non-keratinized squamous epithelium. And uh, this is thickened peripherally at the limbus, okay? So at that point, this epithelium will become very thick. At the limbus, there is going to be a special place. I mean, the limbus houses the germinative stem cells of the corneal epithelium. Then you have the underlying stroma. And this stroma is composed of uh, collagen fibrils, ground substance, and fibroblasts. Now, how is the cornea transparent? Okay, how is the cornea transparent? The cornea is transparent with the help of two mechanisms. Number one is that there is a regular packing, small diameter, and narrow separation of the collagen fibrils. And number two, there is a tightly regulated stromal hydration. And how that happens, we are going to discuss it now. So inside to the stroma, you have the endothelium. Now this is a single layer. It is a monolayer of non-regenerating cells. And this layer actively pumps ions and waters from the stroma and it controls the corneal hydration and hence transparency. Now, one very important concept here that there is a difference in the regenerating capacity between the epithelium and the endothelium. And what is the meaning of this? If there is any damage to the epithelium, okay, if there is any damage to the epithelium, that is going to be repaired by spreading and proliferation okay so the cells are not only going to spread they are going to multiply they are going to proliferate as well but if there is any damage to the endothelium there is just going to be spreading there is not going to be any kind of proliferation and this is important because there is a limit to this and after a certain point the functioning capacity of the endothelium is going to get compromised and there is going to be overhydration of the stroma and that is called corneal edema. So the nutrition of the cornea is supplied almost entirely by the aqueous humor. Okay, So we know that the aqueous humor circulates through the anterior chamber and it baths the posterior surface of the cornea. Now the aqueous also supplies oxygen to the posterior stroma. So till the posterior stroma, it is going to be covered by the aqueous. But the anterior stroma, it gets its oxygen from the ambient air. Okay. So what is the clinical implication of this? That when you close your eyelids, when the eyelids are closed, the oxygen supply to the anterior cornea, it is reduced, but it is still sufficient during the lid closure. Okay. It is decreased, but it is sufficient. 
but if you fit a tightly fitting contact lens over the cornea then in that case it can compromise the oxygen supply to the interior part of the cornea and that can cause corneal especially epithelial edema okay so what's the function of the cornea it protects the internal ocular structures and together with the lens it refracts and focuses light onto the retina and the junction between the ambient air and the curved surface of the cornea covered by its optically smooth tear fin all of these combined together to form a powerful refractive interface and then we come to the sclera the sclera is formed from interwoven collagen fibrils of different widths and these lie within a ground substance and all of this is maintained by fibroblasts so it has got a variable thickness around the optic nerve it is very thick it is one millimeters around the optic nerve head and at the level of the muscle insertions it is thin 